Hello everyone, uh, glad to be back. Today is the 6th of uh, September, now it's almost 3 o'clock, uh, daytime. And uh, I'm Levan Gudadze, host of this uh, YouTube channel in which uh, I'll try, I'm trying to uh, give you some updates uh, on uh, news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets uh, uh, for this moment. So let's begin, man. But but first of all, uh, um, let me ask you to subscribe on my channel and uh, leave some commentary. Let's have some exchange of uh, opinions, man. Uh, and if you like uh, this channel, uh, then please uh, push uh, that like button. That will greatly increase chances to for my channel and me to reach more people uh, on this huge YouTube uh, community, on this huge platform. So that's been said, um, let's start man. I will try to make this video as short as uh, possible. I hope uh, sound is like better than it was in previous days because as I promised, I went to shop this morning, this morning. You know. Today and tomorrow my day offs. Uh, I have day off, so I went to shop and buy some mic. I hope uh, it will at least little bit improve uh, sound quality. So anyway, man, let's start. Let's start to talk about some news, man. Uh, so first of all, let me do this stuff uh, like that, and then. Uh, And then uh, let's let's start with a new update from Russian Defense uh, Ministry, uh, which had uh, come out like hours ago, or something around. So I will read for you. I, I did translate uh, Russian text uh, through Google Translation. Uh, so if any. Uh, if I see any wrong uh, translation, sometimes Google does that kind of thing, you know, it, it didn't translate uh, even in, in, in close. But, you know, anyway, let's start, man. Uh, that's what uh, official uh, representative of Russian Defense Ministry said you know, today. The armed forces of Ukraine during the day, and that means, I mean, this update is about last 24 hours. So every day the French ministry does give you updates on last, on, on previous like 24 hours. So let's start, man. Uh, the armed forces of Ukraine during the day uh, continued to uh, attempt attack uh, uh, in certain areas of uh, Nikolaev uh, Krivoyo direction. That's the uh, area of so-called Kherson uh, offensive. If you look at the map, you know you will clearly see, you know, in which area these uh, operations were taking place. So, Russian Air Force's uh, missile troops and artillery are delivering uh, precision strikes against units and reserves of the armed forces of uh, Ukraine. In the areas of uh, the settlements of Visunsk, Yalkina, Virzhnivate and uh, Chernopolia, Chernopolia, Krasnopolia, наверное, probably. Let me see Russian translation. Yeah, Chernopolia, that's name of that settlement. So, in the areas of uh, settlements of uh, Visonsk, Yalkina, Bereznigovata and Chernopolia, uh, manpower and military equipment were hit at the temporary deployment point of the 61st Infantry Brigade, uh, Brigade and the uh, 35th uh, Marine Brigade in the, and the 17th Tank Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. Also, three depots of rockets and artillery weapons and ammunition were destroyed in the Velika 
Artakova district of uh, Nikolaev region. Then high precision long range sea based missile uh, missiles calibre in the area of uh, village of uh, Karpovka in the Propetrovsk region destroyed large fuel storage destined to for a group of Ukrainian troops in uh, the Nikolaev Krivorog direction. Fighter aircrafts of Russian uh, aerospace forces and the air defense systems shut down three Su-25s of the Ukrainian uh, Air Force, one Su-25 near the village of uh, Snigirovka and two Ukrainian Su-25s near uh, Mirna in the Nik Nikolaev region. So I don't know why Google is translating like Nikolaev. Did Ukrainians change name for this city? This city is Nikolaev man, and always was like, you know. That's uh, anyway, that's how I, I'm calling this city Nikolaev. So in just one day in the Nikolaev Krivoyok direction, the enemy lost 12 tanks, 11 infantry fighting vehicles and eight other armored vehicles, six pickup trucks with the heavy machine guns and more than 210 military personnel. So that means uh, only on this direction, on, uh, on um, Seattle of so-called, uh, on the war Seattle of so-called uh, Kherson uh, counteroffensive of Zelensky's regime, Kiev lost uh, forces that still are loyal to Zelensky had uh, lost uh, 12 tanks, 11 infantry fighting vehicles, 8 other armored uh, vehicles, 6 pickup trucks with heavy machine guns and uh, 210 um, military personnel. We can say if they lost 210 approximately, you know, probably we should take these numbers, uh, at least when it comes to personnel. Uh, with uh, some grain of salt, because I mean, who did count all the, all those casualties, man? This is approximate numbers, you know, as as I understand. Uh, but if the you know, if intelligence of the defense ministry of Russia decide that you know, approximately two hundred and ten uh, uh, KIA's, uh, probably. Same time, Zelensky's regime had uh, on this direction alone somewhere around 500 uh, uh, wounded uh, personnel. So let's continue, man, uh, reading this uh, update. High precision air ba based uh, weapons hit the points of the temporary deployment of units of the 54th and 93rd mechanized brigades of the armored forces of Ukraine near the city of Artyomovsk of the Donetsk people of uh, the Republic. Up to 250 servicemen and more than 10 vehicles and armored vehicles were destroyed. Holy moly, man. It seems like uh, there are some big activities on, the Don on in, in Donbass direction. Man. While uh, Zelensky's regime is talking about this so-called counteroffensive in uh, Nikolai Krivoy Rog uh, direction, so called Kherson counteroffensive. I mean, meanwhile, uh, some big activities are in Donbass, and uh, it seems like only for the last 24 hours, uh, Zelensky's regime lost up to 250 servicemen on that direction, uh, too. So you can, you can just see it, man. 210 uh, soldiers were lost in. KIAs were uh, in Herson direction, 250 soldiers in, in Donbass. I mean, that's that's huge uh, losses, man, for uh, for for any uh, for any uh, country, man. Uh, you know, uh, for Ukraine too, of course. In the area of village of uh, Vysilyanka, uh, Zaporozhye region, up to 100 militants and 15 units of military equipment were destroyed by high precision strike of the Russian aerospace forces on the points of temporary deployment of the 1st Battalion of 65th a Mechanized Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. So now you can see, man, in, 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 Zap 
in Zaporozhye region there was uh, Zelensky's regime had some hundred k IAs. Over the over the 250 in Donbas and uh, two, 210 in um, so-called Kherson offensive. So only for last like only for last uh, 24 hours. Uh, forces that are loyal to, to Zelensky lost uh, in action more than 500 soldiers, it seems like. So it must be thousands and thousands uh, as a casualty. At least one to one and a half thousand like, soldiers. Uh, so, you know, as I was saying in previous days, this so-called Kherson offensive has told uh, there's no matches uh, like can uh, or was achieved by Zelensky's regime. They did talk some uh, irrelevant uh, villages there and, uh, and and they lost thousands and thousands of soldiers. So uh, this uh, uh, in this area. I, I believe that in, in that area, uh, Zelensky's regime just don't, don't have any more uh, reserves, man. Enough, which will be enough to do some uh, big uh, offensive operations, you know. And all, all we see now is like uh, local uh, battles between sides and because the uh, Russian side is actively using trap tactics. This, uh, this is uh, uh, enabling them to uh, put some heavy uh, you know, losses on Zelensky's regime. Because, uh, you know, as I was saying previously, I, I don't know why uh, uh, Zelensky's side, Zelensky's regime is uh, making same mistakes time after time. You know? When uh, on cert certain uh, direction, uh, Russian forces do uh, leave positions, going back, allowing uh, opponents to bring in uh, manpower and uh, equipment, and they are closing gap and destroying the entire group. And, I mean, so many times that happened to you know Zelensky's forces that they should learn something, you know, by now. It seems like they just going forward no matter what, and, and you know they are you know achieving nothing, just nothing, man. Uh, I'm not military expert, but uh, I mean it seems like illogical. It was illogical from the very beginning because, uh, and that's why I was skeptical about all this story about uh, Kherson offensive because. Uh, because uh, without uh, uh, without artillery, uh, without uh, uh, air support, you know, and of course Ukraine does have some uh, aircrafts and some uh, artillery, but in comparison to Russians, I mean, their forces are in in, in a, uh, loose side, so. Uh, without um, what is that? Just a second. With, without advantage in uh, in uh, artillery and aviation, that's what I'm trying to say, man. How will uh, Zelensky's regime achieve any results, man. I mean, it's impossible. So, my skepticism was proven right for last week. I mean, they did achieve uh, absolutely nothing. If to, if you listen to some Western uh, media outlets, man, they are talking about some gains from Zelensky's regime side, man, and but but. They are never talking about particular, like, 
areas that were liberated. What they liberated? Some irrelevant uh, ruins of a uh, uh, village, which will change in, in, in this conflict nothing. I mean, come on, man. So, as I was saying, man, uh, this story with counteroffensive is uh, effectively over. Uh, Western media may talk about this stuff uh, for, for a while, and uh, Zelensky's regime may uh, put some more manpower uh, on that direction, on the uh, Western direction, but eventually, I mean, they will achieve nothing, nothing of course. Anyhow, man, anyhow, let's let's go and check some uh, other news because uh, probably I am tired with these uh, stories of uh, about this conflict, man. I hope uh, this this conflict will end uh, sooner, man, because I mean, uh, you know. As I said many times previously, man, no one is happy about this conflict in Russia. No one. If Zelensky was uh, uh, thinking about his people, about citizens of Ukraine and about Ukraine, he will uh, start peace negotiations like four or five months ago. Man. But because he is a puppet of uh, Washington and London, I mean, he can do nothing. And Washington and London will fight this uh, in, in this conflict uh, until last Ukrainian man, if they are allowed to so you know let's let's see some uh, different news man uh, and uh, I will finish this uh, video uh, Russian president Vladimir Putin had a visit today uh, was talked to 2022 uh, military games in the uh, far east of uh, Russia. Uh, as you know, more than 10 countries are participating in these war games, including China and India. So, uh, today, the uh, Russian president did visit this uh, place. Maybe he, uh, he made some statements, I did not see it yet. But, uh, you know, Seems like he is still very active and uh, very much in control of the uh, situation, despite all those uh, all those predictions from Western so-called uh, so-called experts, man, that were saying that uh, if this uh, conflict in Ukraine will continue for a month, two or three or five, then uh, some regime change will occur in Russia. Man. No, no regime change here, man. We don't need that. You know, when time will come, the Russian society will choose another president, and uh, that's how it's gonna be, man. We don't need no fucking regime changes and no revolutions and no nothing like that, man. You know, just peaceful transaction of power. That's it. You know. So here, I mean, here is a uh, Zaporozhye nuclear power plant again. This power plant is uh, almost every day in Russian media outlets because uh, Zelensky's regime continues to shell this place. Here we have information that uh, city of Energodar, which is in close proximity from this power plant, uh, was left without electricity because uh, of shelling from uh, Zelensky's regime, probably some uh, power lines were, was damaged again, you know, and uh, what can you say, man, it more increasingly looks like uh, Zelensky's regime uh, has in hostage uh, entire European continent, man, you know, entire European continent uh, had become a uh, hostage of uh, Zelensky's regime, which is shelling nuclear, biggest nuclear power plant in Europe, man. 
So can you imagine, man? That's, you know, and, you know, I was saying that in yesterday's video, man, I mean, uh, I was saying that I'm surprised that there are no, I, I don't hear voice of uh, so-called environmentalists, man, and, and green parties and, and people like that, you know. Why they are not saying, you know, anything about this uh, crime that Zelensky's regime is committing, uh, not just against uh, humanity, but uh, against the planet itself, you know. They are shelling nuclear power plant, man, endangering millions and millions, tens of millions of people, man, on the uh, European continent. But yet again, on, in, in the West, in the Western world, you're not going to hear from uh, any so-called uh, Green Movement activists anything about this. Because they they're not they don't really care about uh, nature man and this planet or human civilization. You know they they are just puppets in hands of real uh, rulers of uh, of the Western world. And that's it. Let's see some more news, man. Uh, let's see some more news. What's going on here? Uh, ah, okay. Uh, Putin will have a close. Uh, Putin will have a meeting with the uh, heads of Russian military uh, during his visit on uh, these uh, war games in uh, Far East. Okay, they will probably talk about uh, ongoing special military operation. Uh, you know, because that's uh, probably main um, talking point for this moment. But who knows, man? We will have some more information a little later. And when it comes to, I mean, uh, Ukrainian conflict, uh, some people do uh, say that this conflict is like frozen at this point because there is no huge movements uh, on one or other direction and I can understand why people see it that way because if you look at the map in a grand scale you don't really see like big changes and uh, you know I have my ideas you know what will happen in, in, in the future I may be wrong but my guess is that uh, in this autumn, in this autumn, uh, we may see in Russia some kind of uh, mobilization, partial mobilization, or maybe even like general one. Uh, Russia will mobilize something around like 300 to 500,000 people. And then in winter, probably general offensive of Russian forces will be gone. So, why I'm saying that, I mean, why, why mobilization is in autumn and uh, offensive in winter? Because mobilized people had to have some training. And it, that does take some time. You cannot mobilize someone and just throw him uh, straight away to, to a front line. That's, uh, inadequate. So, probably in uh, October, somewhere around October, November, but probably October, in autumn, you know, probably there will be some uh, mobilization. And uh, in winter, we will see some uh, grand uh, offensive operations from Russian side. That's how we see this picture, but I, I can be wrong, but. but I do see logic in this kind of scenario, man. because uh, I mean, uh, how long this conflict should uh, you know can I last? Man? You know, for now we see that uh, 
the next case regime, which is controlled by West, uh, is not willing to participate in, in, in any peace talks. No? But if in uh, winter time Russia will uh, do some big scale uh, offensive operations and take, let's say, entire south, uh, south and uh, east side of Ukraine from Kharkov city on the north to Odessa in the south. Uh, then uh, Zelensky and his henchmen will be more willing to talk, you know, if Moscow will agree to talk to them at that point, you know. So let's wait and see, man, let's wait and see. I hope this conflict will end uh, today, but we all know that this is not happening. Man. So what else are making headlines, man? Uh, here we have information about economy uh, of Russia. And oh, one more thing about Ukraine. Uh, German Chancellor Scholz uh, is uh, opposing to send the uh, German tanks uh, to Zelensky's regime. Uh, as you know, Germans are making like one of the best tanks in the world uh, long time ago was leopard one now it's leopard two and uh, you know many experts are saying that this tank can be best in the world or one of the best for sure but uh, german chancellor is uh, refusing to send these tanks to ukraine for good reason man we did see german tanks on uh, on our soil not we personally but our grandfathers and uh, grandmas. They did, see, they did see German tanks in, in, in our soil, in Soviet Union. And uh, if Germans send these tanks again, man, uh, it will, of course, for, for, for us now, it will be, you know, uh, it will uh, resemble some, uh, some some parallels, man. It will definitely make some parallels with, uh, with a great war, man. Great patriotic war. So, they should stay away, man, from this conflict. They should stay away uh, from this conflict as far as, uh, as they can. You know. But, but, as we know, uh, Western elites are crazy so they may do anything really but even I mean let's be real man even if they send all the tanks that they have they will be destroyed in one or two weeks time and what what difference that it, it's gonna make man? you know there will be just more casualties and more destruction that's it you know and that's it So, what else was in the headlines, man? I was talking about, yeah, I, I, was, I, I did start to talk about some um, economic uh, stuff. So, it seems like uh, Russian economy is uh, uh, losing points in sense of GDP in, uh, again. Uh, that's what happened in previous months. Uh, even though uh, months before, uh, numbers were better so russian economy was gaining some points but eventually i mean everyone knows that uh, russian gdp will lose something up to at least you know i don't want to guess but uh, uh, russian gdp will go in minus that's for sure you know not just russian but the entire world is struggling right now but of course, after there are so many sanctions, man. Russia is most sanctioned country in the world, for God's sake, man. So, of course, the uh, economy is is losing uh, in certain areas, and as a result, GDP will uh, lost quite a few percentage percents. Uh, but you know, it is what it is, man. Uh, it is what it is. You know. 
and in continuation of this uh, information about the economy mm, here we have information that uh, for example uh, selling of uh, cars I mean, fall in previous months for uh, uh, for 62 percent you know so car sales were slow in August for 62% uh, in comparison to August of uh, previous year. So that's quite a huge number, you know. Yet again, that's because of sanctions and uh, it's uh, now harder probably to import some cars from uh, uh, Europe. Mm. And in, 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 in this sense, not just Russia is uh, uh, losing, but uh, European car manufacturers are losing too, and the big time, man, big time. And this information says that uh, in previous months, uh, you know, uh, Chinese cars were uh, had the most demand, you know, and most cars that that was imported in Russia was Chinese. So what will happen is that eventually market will. Uh, like manage you know itself uh, but what will happen is that uh, all those cars from germany uh, italy or uh, great britain will uh, leave this market will leave russia and uh, and the chinese uh, automakers will uh, gain this market and most of the cars in that are sold in Russia, most of the cars of the foreign companies will be Chinese cars, you know. So, I'm not sure <laughs> that you know, Europeans really think about uh, results of the sanctions that they were putting on Russia. You know, they lost, uh, they are losing market of 140 million people, more. Why? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. So, and this is it probably for this moment. Let me once more again uh, check here. Yeah. Uh, oh, we have news that Liz Truss is now officially Prime Minister of uh, Great Britain. So, what can I say, man? In yesterday's video, I was very emotional about candidacy of this person. Today, I'm not gonna say nothing, man, because yesterday's video is gone for good, you know. But, but, uh, as I understand, uh, this new prime minister will uh, do for Great Britain no better than the uh, previous one did you know uh, so let's wait and see man let's wait and see some you know long time ago great britain did had uh, some great politicians man. truly great politicians world world scale politicians now they have uh, this kind of uh, clowns, you know, like Johnson was, and now this Russophobic uh, someone, you know, or something. Okay, man. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, finish this video for now. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you find this uh, video interesting, and if so. Uh, please consider to subscribe on my channel leave some commentary and uh, push that like button um, i hope sound quality is like little bit at least little bit better than uh, it used to be and yeah this is it for now mm. i will make like video tomorrow probably so until then, uh, 
Bye bye and uh, take care.